Here is uh, another law that we want to look at, and this new law is called as the Charles Law. Charles Law is a temperature and volume law. Again, recall that I gave you four different factors. We had P, we had V, we had N, and we had T. So if all four variables are changing, it's impossible to study a law. Um, that this is a temperature and pressure, a temperature and volume law, which means that if these two are going to be measured, then the pressure and volume must be kept constant. So always each law has two parts, two variables that you're studying and two factors that have to be kept constant. Um, what this law is stating is that if the temperature of a gas increases, the volume increases. So in, as you can see from this image over here, if you're increasing a heat from 200 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin, then the volume expands. And I think this was a much easier law to relate to. Um, if you have ever seen the a hot air balloon rise, uh, that's how uh, Charles was able to depict this law. Um, Charles was a chemist and he was observing the hot air balloon rise and he noticed that once you have a hot air balloon um, getting ready, uh, how the 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 heat is uh, flared up which helps the balloon rise up. Now this law is then expressed as the equation shows you over there. I'm going to write it over here too so everybody sort of understands. It's actually V1 equals over VT1 equals V2 over T2. So um, this is a direct relationship uh, in which we're saying that when we increase the temperature, if the temperature increases, then the then the volume of the gas correspondingly increase. Uh, again, the mathematical expression is important. You must know this for the exam because out of the two laws, I'll ask you one of the laws. I'll ask you to define the law. When you have to define the law, you must add these two statements. You must add the mathematical expression and then you must also give me an example of that law to relate to it. So here, let's try to do a mathematical problem using a Charles law. Um, here is a mathematical expression that says a balloon has a volume of 785 milliliters at um, the temperature 21 Celsius. If the temperature drops to do zero degrees Celsius, what is the new volume of the balloon? Again, P is constant. So again, I've been telling you always pay attention to what is constant to relate to which law to apply. Now, one thing is very, very important in doing calculations for um, uh, for Charles' law is that how, even though you're given temperature in Celsius, you must convert that into Kelvin. Uh, you cannot do any mathematical problem using Celsius. Um, a long time back I did tell you that Celsius is adding 273 to Kelvin temperature and it's because you will always get a positive value. Gases are one of the factors uh, that Kelvin was designed because in Kelvin temperature you will always have a positive value otherwise if you have gases that have negative 13 or negative 58 temperature um, that will mess up your mathematical calculations and gases can be liquefied at very low temperature. So must convert in Kelvin. Must convert in Kelvin. Again, it's in red. You got to remember that. So here is my, if I read this question again, I can see that the volume is 785 ml, which is my data table here. Uh, I am asked to find my new volume, which is shown over here as the question mark. And my temperature initially was 21, but I'm going to convert that to Kelvin, so adding 273. And the new, uh, the temperature drops to zero degrees, so that is 273 Kelvin. So once you have done that, um, you can now apply um, your uh, values to the mathematical problem. And let's look at the mathematical uh, solution over here. As you can see, we have our mathematical problem here. We are trying to isolate for V2. Again, notice before we do that, I must get rid of T2 from this side. And in order to do that, I would have multiply both sides by T2. 
So that gets rid of this. So this is here, and that's how my mathematical expression is V1 times T2 over T1. And I plug in the values, and I get it over here. Now over here, since I have a little space, I'm going to go ahead and write this equation like this and uh, show you different ways of isolating for different factors. So now let's try to isolate. If you did a mathematical problem and you had to isolate for T1, how would you do that? I want you to think about it. In order to do that, I would first have to get rid of V1. So I would do 1 over V1 on this side, and I can do 1 over V1. Remember, you got to multiply or divide on both sides. So that gets rid of this. This, But this gives me 1 over T1 equals V2 T2 times V1. Now, I cannot directly apply that because this is 1 over t2. So if I take a reciprocal of, uh, of both sides, which is I, could, I turn it upside down, then that will be t1 over 1 equals t2 times v1 over v2. This is one way of doing this mathematical equation to be able to isolate it for this. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and uh, I want you to either pause it or copy it down and then we're going to go ahead and do it another way. All right. Um, another way of doing that would be v1 T1 equals V2 over T2. Now you can also, if you have to isolate for T1, another way of doing that is doing cross multiplication. That would be, now this is not something that I really would love to do it, but you could do it. T1 times V2 equals, uh, you're going to, let me just show you what I'm trying to do. I'm going to cross multiply both sides like this. So coming back over here, we will then have V1 times T2. And if I have to isolate for um, T1 as we are trying to do, then I must get rid of V2 so that I would have to divide both sides by V2. So that would be dividing both sides by V2. And now you can see that these two cancels out and I get T1 equals to V1 times T2 divided by V2. Now this is, these are the two parts that I did show you as, um, as, uh, uh, pulling out are important. You need to be, you need to learn how to, how to isolate both of these equations, whether it's Boyle's Law or Charles Law. So if you're having little difficulty, uh, review these lectures again and try to get a little bit of algebra help. I'm sure there's a math lab around you that can help you with both of these. If not, I'm always, always available to help you out with any situation that you may have. Okay, let's uh, keep on with the Charles Law and practice one more problem. A sample of oxygen gas has a volume of 420 ml at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. At what temperature? Again, what are we asking for is the temperature. Will the volume of the gas be at certain uh uh, volume. So again, notice P and N are constant, so that's, that's a hint that this is going to be again one of the Charles Law. So I go ahead and write down my mathematical equation first, and then I try to write my data table. V1, T1, V2, T2. So what is my V1? My V1 is 420 ml, so I write this down over here. What is my T1? My T1 is 18 degrees Celsius. Again, give it a moment and think about it. We have to add 273 to it to convert it into Kelvin. And what are we going to find for V2? V2 we already have shown as 640 ml. Okay, so now what is the next thing we have to find is T2. And that's what we have to find. So if I add this up, I'm going to get 280. Two, right? Did I do the math correctly? No, this should be 1. And this should be 9. I didn't do the math correctly, so that's 291. I'm going to go to the next slide. It will show you how it has been solved. 
Oh, actually, I didn't show it to you over there. So I want you to go back and review what I did and then solve for that problem. I purposely did not, I don't want to finish up the answer for you. Uh, we'll also do it in class.